Well, MPs on the House of Commons Standing Committee on Defence met this afternoon to question Canada's Minister of Defence, Anita Anand, about uh, this country's response to the war in Ukraine and about Canada's defence budget, among the lowest in NATO now. Let's bring in three members of the House of Commons Defence Committee. Brian May is the Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Defence. Carrie Lynn Finley is the Defence Critic for the Official Opposition Conservatives. And Lindsay Matheson is the defense critic for the NDP. It's good to see you all. Thanks for taking time to speak with me tonight. Uh, Mr. May, let me start with you if I can. The Prime Minister uh, was, was, is in Europe now, is in Brussels today. He'll be at the NATO Emergency Summit meeting tomorrow, urging countries uh, to do more to support Ukraine. And I guess what I'm wondering is, will we hear him commit Canada uh, to an increase in defense spending to meet the NATO threshold of 2% of GDP? Will he say that tomorrow? Well, first of all, uh, Peter, thank you so much for having me on your show and uh, for the opportunity to, to speak to all your viewers. Uh, as you said, uh, the Prime Minister is in Brussels today at NATO headquarters to meet with, with NATO allies to, to further coordinate support for Ukraine and discuss further strengthening uh, NATO's defences uh, and deterrent measures uh, moving forward. Uh, Canada's contributions to NATO are well recognized and appreciated. Uh, on Saturday, uh, we are we are doing more. To answer your question, we are doing more. On Saturday, uh, HMCS Halifax uh, departed uh, Canada, and, it, and it's on its way to join NATO's maritime forces. Also leaving today, are, uh, we are delivering uh, howitzer-style artillery guns to Latvia. Uh, and Canadian Army personnel for that artillery battery. Uh, we right. know, but as, as that, you know, the war in Ukraine's underscored the, the conversation around uh, defense, the defense budget, and you know, Canada is sure. at one point four uh, percent of GDP when uh, the NATO threshold's two percent. Is your government going to bring the country to a two percent threshold? So the the answer to that question is is uh, is not as simple as a yes or no. In 2017, our government released a fully costed and fully funded defense policy, strong, secure, and engaged, that does in fact raise spending by over 70 percent. Um, you know, this plan allows our military and our allies to count on predictable, sustained investments uh, by Canada. It, it's not it just does about it raise the money it to, we spend, does it raise it to two percent of GDP. It's, it's, it's not just about the money we spend, Peter. It's about how we spend it and, and, and which capabilities we can contribute to NATO. Okay. Um, and, and, I, and, I, and I have to say that if you look at the commitment we've had uh, in uh, Ukraine uh, with uh, training over 33,000 troops, we're seeing the fruits of those labors now. All right. Uh, Ms. Finley, Canada's defense uh, spending, as I said, sits at 1.4% of GDP. What does your party want to see by way of increases in defense spending in the budget is is reaching the nato two percent benchmark is that the minimum canada needs to achieve here at least because we see what a war in europe looks like in 2022 one we didn't want to see one we didn't expect and we need to simply emphasize our national security our military our defense in a way that we have not seen this government commit to. My friend mentions that uh, they've increased spending by 70%, but they also changed the way they calculate that spending. And the 1.39% of GDP now includes Coast Guard funding and veterans funding. That is not the way to cost it. It should be a Department of National Defense percentage. We should reach the 2%. We need to reach the 2% because we have a lot to do. We have to get fighter jets, which they've had six and a half years to make a decision on, and they have not yet. We keep hearing it's coming, it's coming in weeks and months, but no timeline. And timelines they have set, they've blown past. Right. We also need to upgrade our NORAD systems. We are very vulnerable in our Arctic. Both Russia and China have made claims uh, up in the Arctic to territory that we consider Canadian. So we have to do our part. Part. And uh, our, I will agree with my colleague that the part that Canada plays is very welcome, very appreciated, but we simply need to do okay. more. We can do more. Let me bring in uh, Lindsay Matheson. Uh, what, what, what's your view? Does the NDP believe Canada needs to spend more on defence right now? So I would have to agree with um, my colleague, Mr. May, in terms of it is about how you spend that money. Um, and of course, we need to ensure that our troops are, are 
well supported. They have the equipment that they need to keep them safe. Um, uh, interestingly, the, the parliamentary budget officer <coughs> also came out uh, last week, I believe, and said that um, the the Defense Department isn't actually spending what they are they had allocated to spend. And uh, we had a conversation in the committee today about what that means um, when you're uh, pushing and punting these decisions um, about that equipment down the line. It costs more. Uh, there there is that inflation rate on it. There are supply chains that that are becoming more and more expensive. And so we had a conversation about what you take away. Um, fair, and, fair. Enough, but what is the what does the two percent NATO threshold mean to the NDP? Is it a tar is that a target Canada should be respecting? I think that we have, uh, of course, those international obligations, and we have to look at how we can best uh, serve them uh, in terms of what we put into um, the people that are doing that work, the, the Canadian Armed Forces themselves, those men and women, and the equipment that we, they have to do their job safely. Okay. Mr. May, the Defence Minister, uh, Minister Nan, told your committee today, and I think uh, as I was watching, I think it was in response to a question from Ms. Finley, and so I'll get her to weigh in in a second too, that Canada is looking at purchasing lethal weaponry from third-party suppliers to send to Ukraine. What can you tell us about that? So the minister has been has been very clear uh, when it comes to our contributions to Ukraine, and I've said this in the house as well. Uh, we are leaving no stone unturned to support our Ukrainian friends. Uh, you know, we we have ha have had six tranches of military aid, and uh, a lot of it, uh, including lethal aid. Uh, we need to look at other options. Uh, we need to look uh, beyond what is sitting on shelves. And, and, and like I said, we're going to continue to look at all options on the table uh, to, to support our friends in Ukraine who are fighting not just for their lives, but their very right to exist. Right. Uh, Ms. Finley, there's, there's growing concern that NATO will be drawn into the Ukraine conflict and will be forced to uh, perhaps engage directly with Russia. Uh, Minister Nan was questioned about that today. We, we know Canada's pledged uh, 3,400 personnel for, for the NATO response force. Do you believe Canada is in a position now to make a meaningful contribution of personnel and equipment if, if there is a NATO war with Russia? Canada is, we're very vulnerable. Our spending has not kept up with modern realities. We do not have the modern equipment we need. The fighter jets are a perfect example. The present CF-18s, which were used from Australia, are not capable of dealing with fifth generation capability out of other countries and countries that would be our adversaries. So this is very concerning. And with respect to my colleague uh, from the NDP, the uh, DND had a $1.2 billion lapse in funding last year. So they're not spending even what they budgeted for. And we need them to spend more. We need them to spend more on jets. We need to spend it on ballistic missile defense, upgrading our North Warning system, uh, expediting the shipbuilding program. There there's a lot that has been left uh, either lagging or just indecision, right. and it has to be fixed. When it comes to NATO, we have uh, the very real prospect that we might be called upon under Article 5. Mm -hmm. We have been giving equipment to Ukraine, which leaves us, and the, this the minister said, with, with less ourselves. but she felt enough that we could meet our commitments. Okay. And unlike what the global affairs minister said, we're not just conveners, we're warriors. And Canada, if called upon, will meet its obligations. Lindsay Matheson, you, you, uh, you raised concerns uh, about where the shipments of Canadian weapons may actually end up and in, in, in whose hands in Ukraine. What's the concern you're raising? And are you satisfied with the minister's assurances today that measures are in place to ensure Canadian weapons don't fall into the wrong hands? Um, I understand that the minister in her response was um, trying to ensure that she was protecting uh, sensitive information, absolutely. However, it's been continual that there have been um, these uh, unfortunate incidents where unfortunate incidents is not the, the strongest term that needs to be used, that in past uh, disputes, past war zones, that, that, that weapons have gone missing. 
They have fallen into the hands uh, of, of those who do not want them to fall into, into terrorist hands uh, through the black market. And um, there are incredible organizations in Canada, Project Plowshares, who are raising that alarm, saying that we have to do more to meet our um, arms treaty uh, obligations in terms of tracking that weaponry. All right. Well, uh, look, it, it's a very fluid situation, as we all know. Uh, we'll hear from uh, uh, NATO uh, leaders tomorrow and see what's next. We know more sanctions are coming, probably more weaponry. Some uh, United States announcing uh, uh, that it will be uh, introducing more sanctions as well. And, and uh, uh, so lots to watch for as this story continues to move. I, I want to thank you all for your uh, contributions to the conversation tonight, and I hope we get a chance to talk again soon. Thank you, Thanks, Peter. Peter.